with Mike L. Murphy, successful animator. And all of you animation students, uh, you're gonna love this interview. This guy's made his career around animation and has a website called Successful Animators. So his focus is helping you once you've graduated, how to work in your field and uh, and have a fantastic career. So um, he's gonna share with us some ideas both upon graduation and in the study itself and how to get into a good program and just his experiences. So you can kind of hear from somebody that's, um, you know, working in the field and can give you some of their, their real world story. So welcome, Mike. And what are the uh, biggest successes you've had that, that you just feel really proud of and excited about in your career you've had so far? Well, the one that I, I'm, I'm sort of impartial to all of it because I'm, I'm one of these people where it's, I don't look at the past. I'm like, I, I'm just excited about the next thing. You know, I'm like, I'm like a dog with short term memory. Like, oh, I did that. You know, and, and it's also the weird thing is when you work on a movie, you, you, you look at it and it's painful. You know, it's, it's like, oh, I should have done this instead of that. Like, you just see the mistakes. <laughs> So I don't ever go back and watch the movies that I've worked on. It's just a weird experience, okay. you know. But I'm just curious for the students to know what kind of things you've worked well, the, on. The big thing that they kind of know where you're coming from. The big thing that everybody loves is I'm the main Gollum animators on Lord of the Rings. So when you watch the second and third films, there's the monologue where Schmeagol's like, nah, you know, doing all that stuff. I did a lot of that animation, so that's the one that everybody loves. I also. Uh, you know, I've got to work on some classic films, like, uh, you know, I've worked on the Harry Potter franchise, the Fast and Furious franchise, uh, Iron Man, you know, I've, I've worked on some of the biggest characters of all time, and it, the funny thing is, if I, if I was a movie star, I would be, you know, I'd be the, I, I would have, I would have been like one of the main movie stars, because I've, I've animated Mickey Mouse, I've animated Iron Man, you know, I've done all these major, characters who, who are movie stars but you know we're animators we're the humble people behind the scenes but it's it's just fun because you get all those different experiences and you, you get a you're an actor and you get to play in all these different roles and, and, and that's just me as an animator but as a, as a just a graphic artist you know getting you know seeing that movie poster for Iron Man and everybody's like oh my god Iron Man they're all excited and you're like I I hope that on that you know I I, I made I made a little piece that I did you know If I was going to mentor you, if you were sitting here and you're like, I want to be an animator, I would say step one is have your goal in mind. Why do you want to do this? If you don't, like I, I couldn't think of doing anything else. Like there was literally nothing else for me. I would rather starve and wither away in a corner if I didn't get to do what made me happy. So if you're not at that level of commitment, go do something else. Like right off the bat. You can waste your money, you can waste your time, but it's not going to work out for you. You have to be like, I can't imagine doing, I will die if I don't do this. That's the level of passion. I know it sounds exaggerated, but I'm serious. That's the level of passion you need. All the people that I know, you know, I, in my class, there are about 20 people now that are really doing well, you know, that are off in the industry, they're directing movies for Pixar and they're doing all this great stuff. And those are the people that all they did was animate or draw or, you know, they were just creative. Where the other people that were, you know, smoking pot or, you know, playing soccer every day or, you know, whatever they're doing, they're not in the industry anymore. You know, the people that were so passionate and dedicated, those are the people that are crushing it right now. So the first thing, step one is, understand that or really honestly check your level you know where are you at with your passion if it's not you know for one to ten if you're not at least at a seven do something else and it brings up a point that i think a lot of students especially their parents have are their jobs in animation i mean you see all of those millions of names at the There's end of the jobs. credit okay so to answer that real quick the average the average animator in Los Angeles who's in the guild is about, I think it's around $88,000. So if you're working at Disney or DreamWorks, you're making at least 90 grand a year. Not, that's good. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, wow. Internationally, it varies. 
animation used to be that you get hired a studio and they give you a three-year contract. Now you're pretty much hired to work on a movie at a time, which means that's anywhere from like a week to nine months to usually a week to nine months. That's the range. So you're constantly getting the job and then you have to find the next job. It's the freelance cycle. And one of the, the main reasons I started Successful Animator is because I was in that cycle and I didn't really understand it. I had never been trained for it. I was, it was kind of thrust upon me and I had to learn the hard way how to have a career and how to, how to create those relationships and plan ahead and you know, save the money and do all these things that when you're, when you're basically you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're your own business owner. And even though you may be working for Disney or Pixar, you're gonna get laid off when that movie's done. And you need to start thinking, you know, and all the jobs I've had are because other friends that got their foot in first, they recommended me. Hey, we're, you know, Disney, we're hiring. Are you free? Yeah, I am. You know, <laughs> here I am. So you, that's one of the things I train is how do you, how do you have that career? How do you get your, you know, how do you get in that college and get the training? What are the schools you want to go to? How do you then get your first job in the industry? Like, what, what do you think is the greatest contributing factor to your success? Passion. I right. knew what I wanted to do. I, I, you know, I was drawn on the walls when I was two years old. <laughs> Ever since I was a little boy. I mean, since the beginning, people were like, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to make movies. Done. You know, there's nothing else to contribute. I was like, I want to make movies. That's it. And... I've never ever doubted that or, or done anything differently and, and, and that's why I've, I've been able to have the success that I have. You know, I'm only, I'm only like half, not even halfway through my career. You know, I'm, I'm just getting revs up and, and I'm totally pumped to do it. So the number one takeaway that I hope people can get from this interview is, like I said in the very beginning, have that passion. Have that goal, because if you have that, you can have a million people say no to you, and you and you know, you're not going to give up. You're going to say, okay, they said no. Why? And you're going to get input. What do I need to do to get better? And they're going to tell you. And you're going to say, thank you. You're not instead of going, oh, screw you. Don't tell me to, you know, don't don't not like my work. You're going to go, thank you for 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 being honest and giving me feedback. And then you're going to take that feedback, grow and get better, show it again. And you know eventually that you're going to get that yes. And it's the one yes that you get that you're in the door, you're in the club, and then you're rocking. How do you work up to get to the Disneys and the Pixars? You know? And then once you're there, what's the next step? Do you start making your own books? Do you, do you start pitching shows? You know, where, what's the career path for an animator? And that's something that nobody's ever talked about. And, and I, I hope to God that somebody else would have taught me. And I, I just had to learn it. So that's, that's why I'm, I'm doing this mentoring so that I can just say, hey, here's the way it is. And, you know, I don't sugarcoat it. And I, you know, I like to pretty much be straight up that it's, there's, uh, there's enough work if you're in the, the top of the top. Right? If you are really super good and you're hardworking and people like you, you're going to be working. If you are under that, and that's 5% of people, if you're that 95% that's not really passionate, you don't really know what to do, eh, then you're going to struggle pretty significantly. So that's why right from the get-go, check yourself, make sure that you really want to do this, and then understand how the business works, understand how to give value to people, and understand what skills you need, and then you're going to be fine. So, and are there some more support jobs that are maybe a little less, um, maybe don't require quite the high level? Like you're working at a fairly high level, it sounds like. Are there quite a lot of jobs that, that are just needed to create the, the whole feature film? Because there's so many names at the end of a film. Yeah. So is there a place where there's just more of a, a more steady and lower employment, but a I mean, sorry, a lower salary, but a more steady employment. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the studios is like, it's like a pyramid, right? There's, there's a lot of jobs in here. When you get up to Pixar and Disney, yeah. there aren't that many studios. So if, if your goal is to be a, like a Pixar animator, it's, it's limited. If you just want to work in yeah. the animation field, well, you've got medical animation, 
You've got courtroom animation. You know, every trial they have CG animation, like the defendant walked here and the knife was here, right? There's, there's product animation, there's architectural animation. And with animation, I mean, there's modeling, there's texturing, there's lighting, there's rigging, there's running render farms, there's doing commercials, there's, there's motion capture. I mean, every, everywhere you go, on TV or in the movies, there's motion graphics, right? You know, free, you know, 99 cents, all that stuff. An artist has to do it, but it's an artist who understands design, right? And they understand the business of freelancing and then they can get in there and they can, they can have that sustainable career. And they also understand that there's going to be times where they're working all the time. There's going to be other times where there's a dry spell. So if you don't plan for that, if you get that first paycheck, you're like, yeah, I'm going to get a Ferrari and you know, I'm going to go to the Bahamas for a month. Woohoo! Uh, and bring all my friends and pay for them. Well, you're not going to last. Like I said earlier, get Maya or get 3D Max. Get one of these, these 3D programs so that you can play around with it, but only let that be about 10% of your time. You just want to get it, you want to get comfortable enough that you, you can start thinking in 3D, but then put it away and, and focus, at least for those two years, focus on 2D. Get that down while everybody else is like, ah, you know, playing around in 3D, because the 3D doesn't help you get any better. The 3D, like I said, it's just a tool, right? If you have a pencil, but you don't know how to draw, what are you going to do with that pencil? You're not going to do, you're just going to make junk with it. You absolutely got to have that passion, and then you got to get. The, you got to do that first pass, get the feedback. And one of the things I teach my students is that you got to. And this, I just found this to be true in the studios. We always do three passes before it's approved. I don't know anybody who just does a first pass and the director's like, "That is awesome. You are approved." It's like, "Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, but change this, this, this." And then you do you do the pass, and they look at it again and go, "It's getting better. Change this, this, and this." And then you do that third pass, and then nine times out of ten, they're like. That's it. Okay, next, right? So you yes, I mean that's what I do with looking at uh, student portfolios for whatever visual art they're applying to. Um, that basically, I kind of tell them I'm, I'm an editor for your portfolio, and that you need to do your first draft, your second draft, and it usually does take three. But now that you mention it, and whether it's me or a prof or another student you know that's in the field where you want to go or even if you have nobody else it's your high school stu teacher um, I recommend having somebody in your field or in the college where you want to apply um, but yeah you need to look at it and try and and I've seen lots of students have to apply a second year um, so like with uh, a lot of students I've worked with they'll try on their own the first year some of them give up um, but a lot of them, they go, okay, well, I didn't get in on my own. I obviously need to know some more stuff. What do I need to know? So and then they find somebody like myself um, at portprep.com, and they learn what are the skills, number one, and acquire those, and they'll work for a whole year just working on building those skills and building their ideas, which mainly I find is the most important. Like, yes, you need to show some basic skill. But more importantly, you got to show your ideas. Because what I'm always telling students is you, it is a fundamental skill to learn how to draw by hand and really learn that how to see what's really in front of you, work with the right brain versus the left brain knowledge, that that's a foundation. That even though you're going to end up working on the computer a lot and maybe mostly, that it's still a foundational skill to learn how to draw. So some students are really worried or concerned. How important is it really? Do I really have to be such a master at life drawing? Let me say this to you, students. To be using the computer. <laughs> students that have this question. Drawing is a language. If you're going to live in France, you got to speak French. If you're going to live in China, you got to speak Chinese. If you're going to live in the film and animation world, you got to visually speak. You need to understand how to communicate. Doesn't mean you're going to go off and draw for the rest of your life, but when you're trying to tell somebody what your idea is and you can't draw it on paper, I can say, oh, it's a guy and he's walking, he's whistling, and you're like, I think I see that. But the minute I draw it, you go, that's it. 
You gotta be able to communicate visually and you gotta give yourself enough time. It takes at least four years. It took me about 10 before I was like good, before I wasn't embarrassed to show people my drawings. You gotta invest, it's true. You gotta invest the time, you gotta recognize the value. Even though I knew I was good. The, the funny thing is, is my drawings weren't the best, but the minute I started doing computer animation, it made me realize that I have to draw to communicate those ideas, and then my drawings got better. And now actually I do, I do large format illustration paintings. You know, I'm gonna have a gallery exhibit in a couple of years. Once I get 20 of these done, it takes me to do one a year. It's, takes forever I never have any free time but if I hadn't have started drawing and had the inclination and, and, and taken learn all these other things and kept at it I wouldn't have the career I have now so when I, when I say to you please 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 learn to communicate get that foundation of visuals down by drawing and that's the main you know get a piece of paper and a pencil and that's how you're going to communicate 99% of the time in this industry so you know, if you think, oh, I'm not going to ever draw computer animation, the people who can draw are the people who are the top of the game in computer animation. The people that don't know how to draw, they never get past a certain point. There are maybe one or two exceptions, but on average, those are the people. So please learn it. Really? Yeah. So even in those other f uh, specializations within animation, gotta, where gotta, it be lighting or whatever, gotta communicate. still lighters, all they are, they're painters. Lighters go and they reference Degas and and you know all, all these you know uh, 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 you know all these great painters. They go and they have so to. Know they also that. need to study some fine art or some art history. Like be aware. All of it. Of color and all of those color things. Color design. You're an artist. You got to communicate. Oh, yes. Visually. You know, because I'm always telling people that, but I am a hands-on artist. I am a painter. You know, and I teach life drawing and and basic drawing, and of course I'm going to preach that. Right, but sometimes young people say, "Yeah, but you're not an animator," <laughs> <laughs> you know. And I'm going to use the computer. <laughs> See how that turns so out for it. So it's good know? to hear from somebody, you know, that's in the field that that knows that yes, this is still important. And I'm seeing it so much in the design fields too that, like in interior design, architecture, landscape architecture, that a lot of this programs, like the schools, went more towards computer um, aided design. And what they're finding now is that the, the profession is um, rather at a miss. And they're trying to bring back hand drawing and perspective training and all of this into the design programs now that they don't have the funding for it. So, <laughs> you know, and it's really a challenge. Like I had this one friend that's a landscape architect. I gave her only five drawing lessons. It's kind of on the fly. I've got this job and I need to draw this thing for my client. How do I do this? And so I would taught her a little bit at a time. And she actually tripled her income in one year. And she said it wasn't so much that she did a better job and she got a better client and then she got a better, better referral and all that. She said it changed how she thought. She could think in 3D now. And she said she designed better as a result. So, um, so it is, it's that, it's that language. And she was saying that for her, when she's designing, if she's using a computer program, she says she, her designs are dependent on how proficient she is in that program or the flexibility of that software program because um, she's just not at will to necessarily make it do anything that she could imagine where your hand, once you train it, can do anything you imagine the, in your mind. Yeah, and, and this is a stylist for a computer and I just want everyone to know this this is a tool. All a computer is, is a digital pencil. 3D animation, it's just a digital pencil. If you don't understand how to draw on that foundation of design and communication, I can give anybody, I, I can go out and grab somebody who's not an artist and give them a 3D animation and they're not going to do very well at it, right? They're going to move stuff around. Oh, look, it's moving, and it's going to not be awesome. But the people who I train them to design, and they understand that motion, you design motion in the rule of thirds. You know, you have a fast motion, and then you, you, you go for a slow motion, and then a little fast motion, you know, and it all comes back down to those basic core fundamentals that you learn when you draw, when you have the three or four years of the foundational drawing. When you're applying to the college, you got to have the, the, the life drawings. 
you got to really show I can communicate visually. You can have some flip books, which are basic, you know, like bouncing balls, just basic stuff that, that, that make the, the person that's reviewing it, which is usually going to be a working animator or it's somebody who was a working animator is now retired. You know, it's, there's two types of professors. There's the working people that come in and teach the night class, and then there's the, the full-time faculty, and that's all they do, so they're no longer in the industry. So those are the people that are going to review your stuff. And they, they don't want to see pictures of Mickey Mouse or, or uh, you know, whatever. I, I don't know, like anime, Japanese anime or anything that, like that. They don't want to see other people's characters. They want to see your characters. They want to see what's out of your imagination. They want to know that you understand how other people design characters. Study Disney character design. Study the, you know, there's some great designs on like Cartoon Network. You know, that I see every time I'm flipping through the channels, there's, you know, uh, I, I don't even know the shows, but I'm like, wow, that looks really cool. Study those, but don't do those drawings and put them in your portfolio. Draw those, learn the formulas, but then put that away and do your own. So I think that would be the, the two biggest components is the life drawing, can you draw, and then the cartoony drawing. And when I say cartoon, I mean more illustrative drawing. It doesn't mean it has to be like cartoony, cartoony, but, you know, drawings for animation that that are your original to you and that show a very clear story. And when I say that, if you're drawing a character and they're, they're walking and they're happy, make sure when I look at that, it communicates. That's a guy walking and he's happy. You know, if it's just some boring stiff thing, I'm like, there's no personality in this. And you gotta remember, animate, when you think of animation, the number one thing you think about is a great story. And that great story is about great characters who you relate to. And if you're just starting out, you know, wanting to select a college and create your portfolio, you can go to portprep.com. Um, we've got a free assessment there to just look at your portfolio, um, have a quick Skype call with you to just get your strategy for your education in line. Um, just letting you know is if your portfolio is ready yet. It's that kind of that first, second draft thing. And we've got um, services there for you, whether you want to, with some self-help, download some tutorial videos on how to put a good portfolio together. Or like Mike says, you can get personal mentoring as well as uh, a number of free videos and uh, study guides, all kinds of things that help you put together the portfolio so you can get into the, the college of your dreams that you can start on an awesome career like Mike's been telling us about. Don't just go inside your cave and do your portfolio and then send it off to the college without asking for feedback. Whether you, whether you listen to us and you, and you want to you know, get our free information and you want to get our training or you just go and ask your friends, but please, you got to get Feedback. If you don't get the feedback, it's not going to be good enough and you're not going to get in and then you're going to get sad and be like, oh, no, I guess I'm not good enough. And then you're going to give up. So to absolutely learn that feedback is the greatest tool that you can possibly ever get. <laughs>